The cross education phenomenon is when there's an increase in muscle strength and motor function of the untrained limb after following a one-sided exercise program for the opposite limb. And in stroke recovery, this means actually training the unaffected side in order to see gains in the affected side. How does cross education work? While the underlying mechanisms aren't completely understood, but there are some different hypotheses on why cross-education works, and these include cross-activation and bilateral access. Let me explain what these mean based on a 2018 article by Green and Gabriel. So cross-activation proposes that one-sided exercise and activity actually excites the motor cortex areas of the brain, both ipsilaterally on the same side of the brain and contralaterally on the opposite side of the brain that you're working. Bilateral access, on the other hand, suggests that the untrained muscle actually shows gains because of something called interhemispheric communication, meaning communication between the two hemispheres of the brain, particularly of the motor areas. It also proposes that high force exercise of the trained side, or in this case, the unaffected side, will actually boost neuroplasticity, leading to gains in muscle strength and motor function in the affected side. Now, I do wanna point out that cross-education isn't going to strengthen each side equally. The side that you're actively working out is of course gonna see better strength gains and movement gains. However, I don't necessarily think that this is a bad thing because if you're dealing with either complete paralysis or very, very limited movement after your stroke of your arm or your leg, anything that you're able to do to help promote even the smallest bit of movement has a huge benefit in my opinion. All right, if you wanna skip ahead to see how to actually implement a cross-education protocol, skip to this timestamp. However, if you wanna hang with me for just a minute, I'm gonna go through some of the evidence behind this technique. The first report of cross-education was actually published in 1894. And since then, there has been a substantial amount of research done, specifically in athletes post-injury, in the general population after surgery, and also after an acute injury, and in people with neurological issues, like those who are post-stroke. In a 2007 article published in the Journal of Sports Medicine, the authors report on some of the main characteristics of cross-education that I think are important to know. One, it can be beneficial for both arms and legs from the tiny muscles in the hand to our large leg muscles that we use to walk like the quadriceps. Number two, it's not age or gender specific. Number three, it can occur with different kinds of training, including of course, traditional exercise, but also with e-stem or mental practice. And number four, it can occur with different modes of training from isometric, where the muscle isn't lengthening, think like a plank, or dynamic, where you're actively lengthening and shortening the muscle, think like a bicep curl. I also found several stroke-specific studies using cross-education to improve the strength and motor function on the affected side. There was a study from 2012 that looked at improving dorsiflexion or the ability to raise your foot after a stroke using cross-education. There were a total of 19 participants and muscle activation increased significantly in both legs by 59% in the trained or unaffected leg and 20% in the untrained affected leg. And something really interesting from this study, there were actually four participants who at the beginning of the study couldn't initiate dorsiflexion, meaning they couldn't even start to lift their toes. And by the end of the study, they were able to do that. There was also a 2018 study that looked at improving wrist extension in stroke survivors using cross-education. There were 24 participants who completed five weeks of what they called maximal wrist extension training on their unaffected side. Five weeks after their training, 20 of the participants came back to see how much of that wrist extension they had retained. Their unaffected wrist extension force increased by 42% and their affected wrist extension force increased by 35%. And lastly, in a 2023 systematic review, the authors found that using cross-education to improve muscle strength of the affected side and stroke survivors is both statistically and clinically significant, meaning it's an evidence-based strategy. How do you do cross-education? While there's no exact consensus on a post-stroke cross-education protocol, a 2017 study looked at training parameters to help maximize the cross-education effect. And they found that performing three to five sets of eight to 15 repetitions of eccentric contractions, which is the part of the exercise where the muscle is lengthening, with rest times of one to two minutes between sets created the greatest change. 
And you may be asking, okay, why are we focusing just on eccentric contractions where the muscle is lengthening, this movement in a bicep curl, versus the concentric part where the muscle is shortening, or this movement in a bicep curl? Well, let the study's percentages spell it out for you. They found that eccentric contractions produced a cross-education effect of 77% compared to 30% for concentric contractions. So let me give you an example of how you could structure a cross-education protocol. Of course, always get permission from your doctor or therapist before starting any new exercise or therapy routine. Let's say that you wanna improve wrist extension on your affected side. So first remember, a higher load and higher intensity is going to help you improve that cross-education effect. So grab a weight that's challenging that you think you can do at least eight repetitions for three sets. So for this exercise, you're gonna take your weight, put your hand on the end of a table, and you're gonna bend your wrist back and then very slowly lower. Again, we're focused on the eccentric portion of this exercise, which is where you're bending your wrist down and therefore lengthening your wrist extensors. You're gonna do at least three sets of eight repetitions, remembering to take at least one to two minutes of a rest break in between each set. Now, if you start regaining movement on your affected side, this is when you wanna start prioritizing active exercises on your affected side and use cross-education as a complementary technique. And you can check out my different playlist, both upper body and lower body workouts to find some active exercise workouts. Leave me a comment and let me know if cross-education is something that you've ever tried and what your results were. A huge thank you to all of the donors who make videos like this possible, with a special thanks to Heather G, Ryan D, and Modus Nova in our Empower tier on Patreon. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.